Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. It's Tokyo time. And Anything But Footy brings you the views of the athletes in action just before their event. They're British Cycling's second golden couple. Even they admit they don't have as many medals as the Kennys. But Laura and Neil Faki are out to add some more to their medal tally in Tokyo. As well as married, they're both tandem riders, Laura with Corinne Hall and Neil with Matt Rotherham. It's definitely a bit of a relief to see how successful and well received the Olympics were. Like, um, you know, that's always a positive thing. So it just fills us with a bit more optimism that, that the Paralympics will also be a success and just kind of want to get out there now and get it, get it done, really. It's been a long five years. How frustrating has it been or has it been... Um, given you actually more time to train? For us, it's been a godsend this extra year. There's no way we'd have been um, in the shape we are now if we'd have had to have competed a year ago. So, yeah, um, although, you know, at the time when it was announced, the delay, I was pretty devastated by it. Um, um, now when I look back, I'm, I'm really relieved we've had this extra year. And, um, yeah, just just intrigued to see what we can now do with, with all the hard work we've put in over this past this past 18 months. Talk about your relationship with, with Corinne. How, how did that come about? How is it? And, and how important is that, that, uh, that pilot in, in, in case of the tandem? Well, I mean, I couldn't ride a, a bike without Corinne. Um, so because I, you know, I go on the back, I'm totally blind. She's, she's basically my eyes on the bike. Um, she's in co- control of the brakes and the gears and, and then it's it's kind of on her to make sure we get round and stay up. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, we started riding together back in 2013 now, so quite a long time ago. And we've been we've been through a lot. Um, we've we've had our ups and we've had our downs. And um, yeah, we work well together because we both kind of know and respect each other and know that we've both got the same goal and. It's fun to be able to ride a bike with someone um, who I get on well with. I was going to say, when I, when I spoke to Matty Lee and Tom Daly before they went out to the Olympics, they said that being mates was really helpful. Is it helpful being mates? Definitely. Um, you know, we need to be able to, you need to be able to have a laugh. Um, and we've always said, like, um, a happy bike is a, is a fast bike. Um, and so, you know, it, it, you might as you know, we, we might as well enjoy the process as well. Like there's, there's no point in doing what we do if we don't get any, any fun out of it. So yeah, it's, um, it, it is, it's definitely a, pri- a, a, a bonus to be able to, to get on well. So a gold medal in Rio, a bronze medal as well in Rio. So you're, you're, you're going into Tokyo as a defending champion. How, how does that change things? I don't think it changes anything if I'm honest um it was five years ago now so it's a long time um you know I 
I obviously I know I've got that sort of target on my back now that I am a defending champion but um five years is a long time ago and I, I I kind of I just I want to focus on the processes not the outcomes like we'll we'll, we'll deal with the outcome when it happens but so long as we go out there and do what we were training to do and and implement all the plans and stuff we'll we'll see what comes of it in the end so your mindset doesn't change no no it's it doesn't at all like you know if, whether you're a defending champion or, or you know new to the sport you still go out when on the start of the you know on the start line and you still want to put in your best performance and and win like it doesn't change whether you're defending or not you, you still want to win um yeah and what does it mean putting on the paralympics gb vest the british vest it's exciting and that that feeling never gets old like um we got our all our kit delivered a couple of weeks ago and it's slightly different to what we've experienced in the past um like it was all delivered to the velodrome rather than going to a kind of specific kitting out session but you know, it, it still felt incredible pulling on, especially like the Adidas leisure wear kit. That's, that's really smart and it, it feels nice when you put it on. And once like once we tried it on, it was basically counting down the days until we could get away with wearing it properly and, and that. So, yeah, it, it doesn't get old at all. Now, your other half is Neil Faki, another <laughs> a, a Olympic, a Paralympic champion as well. I, I noticed on social media he packed quite early. Yeah, was it no, really, really I a pack, packer than you? No, no, I packed early. He didn't pack. <laughs> you didn't have um, to pack for him, did you? I told him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a normal thing, Laura? Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> he, well, he's, it's a good job he's a track rider and not a road rider because he cannot, he cannot pack. So <laughs> with being a track rider, they don't get to travel as much as we do as, as road riders so maybe it's just that he doesn't get enough practice at it I don't know but he, he, he falls apart Hi I'm Neil Fahey Paralympic cyclist right in the back of the tandem part of Paralympics GB and on my way to Tokyo I mean it's definitely a bit different for sure um, this is a game's like no others of course uh, but yeah just as, as excited as ever really I mean firstly I've never been to Japan so that's very cool uh, and obviously we've just come off of the, the hype of of the Olympics, which is always nice right before the games, just to uh, kind of get the uh, the mood going, whets the appetite. So yeah, I can't wait really. And obviously, we've had this year longer as well, so it's that kind of um, kind of just waiting, waiting for the moment, and, and finally we're we're so close. I can't wait. And you going to Tokyo this time as a medalist, but not the defending champion. Is that is that a different kind of way of going into the games? Um, yes and no. I mean. Although I'm not defending Paralympic champion, we are reigning world champions. So I feel like we're the favourites anyway going into this. It doesn't really change a lot as far as I'm concerned. It's a position that Matt and I are used to. Uh, we often go into events as favourites and that does bring a, an element of pressure to it. But it's a position I'd much rather be in than the rest of the, the world who are chasing us. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't think it changes things. It's maybe, If anything, it makes me more hungry, if I'm honest. It's interesting that you say that because I was speaking to Max Whitlock the other day and he was saying it's a different kind of pressure when you're the, the targeted one, you're the one that people are looking out for. Does that resonate with you as well? Yeah, it does. Um, but truth is, this almost sounds slightly boastful, but it's a position I'm, I've been used to for quite a few years now is that you know, I've held the world record in the event for, for a decade now and I've been that one who everyone's been shooting at. But it is hard to stay there and you've got to constantly keep moving forwards and it's it's about keeping that motivation to keep to keep pushing forwards. But, um, but yeah, it's a pressure I quite like. Um, there's something nice as well that in which won't be the case here. I think actually that as as defending champion, you you're last off in the, the timed event that we do. So you're kind of the last one to go, and you know the final result as you cross the finish line, whether you've won or lost. Whereas because we're not defending champs this time, I don't think we'll be last to race actually. So that's that is a slight variation. Go back to the, the previous question, and obviously that does bring an element of pressure because you you see the times your opponents are doing before you. Um, so if someone goes and breaks the world record, which could well happen here, you then have to react to that. But that's something uh, we're very much ready for. Matt and I we've done a lot of work on that and. Uh, and yeah, I think we thrive off it, to be honest with you. 
not to say we don't ever have little arguments. It's kind of like that married couple life, to be honest, which, of course, I, I go through in sport as well. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's one of those. I think regardless of who you ride with, when it comes to race day, you know you both want to win anyway. So we're a, we're a great team from that point of view. You mentioned it like a married couple. Obviously, Laura's on the team as well. Um, is that a good thing, Neil? Do you think having having her with you? There's potential for it to not be a good thing, but we've been through it so many times. We know where the the, the kind of potential pitfalls might lie. Um, I'll be honest, like, I mean, firstly, I'm very lucky to have my member of my family out with me, which most people don't have at all. So uh, from that point, it's a great great thing to have i can speak to laura about other things away from cycling we can de-stress when we need to um but of course you've got that added pressure of watching your your loved ones compete which is way more stressful than racing so that's something i I hate doing but um i mean my kilo is about 10 minutes before her pursuit final and that was the same in rio and we were were both very good at almost just switching off and compartmentalizing it so you almost discount what they're doing and you just focus on yourself and it'd almost be considered a selfish thing, but I think we're both very good at it. And then after we're done racing, we can kind of reflect on what the other one did and whether they need to have a, a big hug to make them feel better or a big hug to celebrate, we'll, we'll do it either way. Um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully this time it'll be yeah, both coming away with a gold, but who knows? I mean, anything can happen. It'd be nice to match the Kennys. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we don't quite have the medal hall at uh, games that they do at the moment. Um, and I can only get one this time. So it's a bit bit more limited. But if we could both get our, our golds, um, I mean, Laura's got got four chances, um, two in the velodrome, two on the road. So, I mean, she might be up there. Who knows? I'll do my bit and try and get that one if I can. And she did your packing for you, Neil. <laughs> She's already mentioned to me that she put me in it. And I forgot, forgot you might mention that. Like, I've, um, I've been an athlete for the best part of 15 years, and I still can't figure out how you pack for these things. It's so hard. It stresses me out. So we started packing, and she was done in about an hour and a half. And I was sat with stuff just strewn across the floor, just sat in the middle with my head in my hands. Like, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. But she did help me, but she did gloat at first for a while, I have to say. Uh, which didn't go down too well. So, yeah, I mean, we've, we've got our strengths, we've got our weaknesses, That that's hers. I'll, I'm sure I've got some strengths somewhere. Neil's hoping for gold and glory in the kilo later this week, but competes in the individual pursuit on the opening day on Wednesday around 3am UK time. Laura's in action in both the velodrome this week and the road cycling at the Fuji Speedway that starts next Tuesday, August 31st. This is Tokyo Time from Anything But Footy, the Olympic and Paralympic Sport Podcast. Follow for more from the 2020 Games in 2021. Sports Social Podcast Network. Lucky Land Casino, asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.